a beautiful winter's day. Look at that. I think it's 10 a.m. and it's already toasty. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Here I've got my Merton's water monitor enclosure. So what we're going to do, we're going to tidy up all around the bottom. I've got two ponds in. So this one's heated all year round. This one's just, it's just there. It's not heated. It heats up in summer, stays whatever it is now. She doesn't use it as much in winter. Um, in summer, she's always swimming back and forth between the two ponds, but in winter she hasn't been seen using that much so we're going to take that out i've got another prop or fake rock mock rock we're going to chuck in inside which has got like a cage you can dig under there she loves to tunnel so that's the first thing so we'll get up to that today we'll refill her pond get that nice and clean might even rearrange some of her climbing branches and basking spots and the other little thing or well, not a little thing it's actually a bigger thing i want to get up to today so you can see for a heat box in a pond i've got these two extension leads that are running along this fence running 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 there's one here going into this aviary there was a small lace monitor in there that was in care for a couple of weeks um, but now there's a lorikeet in there so that's not going to be needed anymore so i want to actually take all this out i want to pull this fence out because it's it's not needed and to be honest it's just a bit ugly especially i've built a new sort of farm style fence there so it's just really unnecessary. So we're gonna pull this out. Lucky I'm an electrician. It's gonna be a bloody long video actually. Run a whole new circuit, whether we come down this wall or out and down, then I'm gonna to have to dig a hole. So once, it actually works out, so I'll have to dig and clean up all this. Once that's dug, dig a hole, dig a trench, 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 all the way to here. I'll have I'll put a, oh wow, look behind here. Oh, I've got to clean that up. I'll probably put a weatherproof outlet, GPO, PowerPoint, whatever you want to call it, on the back here. And also, after this winter, my sand monitor, my Verona school diet, is getting pretty big for its inside enclosure. So I'm actually going to chuck another Avery right here. So out of this PowerPoint on the back of the water monitor's enclosure. We can loop straight out, another GPO. We can get it ready for when this aviary goes here. First things first, start cleaning up around the aviary here and we can get stuck into that. First job for the day. I was just trying to clean up a bit there where she's flicked out the mulch or the mulch was washed out and it's just built up around the bottom, but I know it's looking all right to me. We'll start on the inside. There she is, Misty, up in her hot box. Misty, water monitor, named after the Pokemon water gym leader. Perfect. I'm sure she'll come down and see what's going on shortly. And as you can see, here's the pond. It's evaporating like crazy. The heat is at, at 32 degrees all year round. She absolutely loves it. On the colder nights, she'll sleep in there at night. During summer, she normally digs a burrow under one of the ponds, or if it's really hot, she'll just lay wherever she ends up at the end of the day. First things first, we'll empty out the pond, clean it up, re the water, take all the water out of this one, and we'll work out something different to put there. Just in the cooler months when she's not utilizing it. Bit more enrichment, bit more of something for her to do, keep her entertained. <laughs> Nearly done getting all the water out. Looks like Misty's coming for a visit, or she's just coming for some sun. Hey, girly. Looks like the sun's perfectly on her log there, so she doesn't care about me, she just wants the sun. So I empty and then just re-hose a few times just to get all the green shit out, just make sure it's super clean. I don't run a filter, maybe I should, but I haven't had any problems, I mean, I check it every day if there's soil or crap in there, I scoop it out. I try to change it weekly and I've had no problems, it stays pretty clean. I don't know. Do a big old shits clog the filter, I honestly got no idea. 
also gave our heater a hose. As you can see, our heater, it's got, um, I got the cover around it. I think it's a, yeah, Aqua One. And it just stops her, because she does love the heat and the heater in the pond, it just stops her from getting any burns off of the glass. So she can't touch it, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that's fantastic. Time to fill her up. Sometimes when I fill it back up, she'll come down and she'll swim and I can hose her and it's like she's swimming in a current, I guess, but I don't know. It is a toasty day, but I'm normally not waffling onto a camera, so she's probably unsure what I'm doing or why I'm being so damn loud. <laughs> Honestly, one of the coolest lizards. I just went looking for the dogs because they'd disappear while I was doing this and looks like they've found some bird shit or something to roll into. Disgusting. When I come back, she's on the move. She's obviously charged up for the day. So you can see up in her heat box, I just whipped it up quickly. That's why it's on the piss a bit, but there's nothing wrong with it. So there's two, I think currently there's two 60 watt heat lights in there. So that just, it perfectly warms up her whole body. Uh, if it's a really cold day, she hangs out in there. But normally she would just, I don't know, she'll be out there for half an hour, come in the sun, go for a walk for an hour or two, lay on the sun, have a swim. They just, she just doesn't stop moving. I guess that's why they're called monitors, isn't it? Perfect, look at that, you could drink out of it. <sighs> Chuck our nice clean heater back in. And don't know how I'm gonna do this one handed, but we can have a crack plug our power back in perfect and don't make a liar out of me the light is on and we're sitting this is the maximum it can go to 32 degrees nice and toasty you should see the steam the steam coming off it when I come out and look at night time yeah she'll love that looks like she's gonna make a liar out of me and go for a swim in her other pond when I'm about to empty it Go away, Crushy. These bricks here aren't the prettiest, but I sort of I put them here originally just to try and stop her flicking dirt out. They probably don't need to be there, to be honest. I might, I might even take them out. Alright, time to empty out the big fella. I don't know why I make things hard for myself. I'm sure I could get a $50 submersible from somewhere, plug it into the power point that's already there, run a pipe away from here. But for some reason I just keep doing this. Pretty backwards. So when I first got her and she was in a tank inside, this was the coolest damn thing. It would be in the tank and I'd put the crayfish or the yabbies, whatever you want to call them, in the tank. And they'd go and hide throughout all these holes. They still do, I obviously just can't see it in this pond. <laughs> As I was saying before the GoPro ran out of battery, that log's really cool because the yabbies go in there and she has to hunt them out. So a bit of enrichment, bit of fun. Something that she'd have to do in the wild. It's really cool to watch. It was really cool to watch in the tank. Still cool to watch here. You just obviously can't see underwater and everything as well. So I just wanted to show you guys before they disappeared wood roaches so they live in here permanently until she eats them these are pretty much exactly what we buy from the pet shops for our reptile pets in australia i think in america they yeah, get the dubias the dubia roaches but we get woodies so how good is that they live in here there's a million other bugs cleaning up her crap and whatever else junks in here but 
frogs come in here. She'd eat the she eats the frogs. She eats whatever comes in here. Bugs, frogs, God knows what else. Tadpoles, who knows? She might even want one now. Now that we're up here, I can show you. So I've got two heat lamps in there. They're 60 watt heat lamps. I've just got this black timber in here. So it just soaks up a lot more heat for her. She just spends her days in here. Originally, I didn't have the timbers around the outside, but I just wanted it to get a little bit more toasty, a little bit hotter for her. So I, I put those on just to trap a bit more of that temperature for her, make her feel more at home. You got a bug under you. Look. Ah. And there you go, one of their defense mechanisms, that tail. So I've also got these grass plants in here, which this one's done surprisingly well. Not this one so much, she keeps digging it up too much. I think they're a lamandra or something, I might just be making stuff up. But you can see how much she's actually dug around it. I just smacked myself in the head. How much she's actually dug around it and these roots are still, they're still grabbing in. And going really well to be honest. Which is great, so I'll leave that one there. I'll probably rip that one out. I might chuck that in the sand monitor enclosure inside just to give the bugs go inside it and it gives us something to dig through and try to get the bugs out of, which is also pretty cool to watch. But yeah, this one's this one's going really well, surprisingly. Now yeah, we got all this space to fill out. How good's that? Heaps of room for her. I'll go get this tunnel cave thing that I want to chuck in. I think it's a universal rock old pond where you can put a pump in and water shoots out the top. But we're not going to do that. We'll chuck it in and just use it as a moth rock. A big basking platform in these winter months, but bloody hell, it's hot today. Whew. I think it's 20 degrees today, so pretty beautiful for a uh, right in the middle of winter, to be honest. Oh, there's a little skink. Little probably woke him up might have been asleep in the grass <laughs> but you can see I've pushed some more dirt up around there so this down here this is one of the tunnels that she uses in summer so she'll actually dig under the pond in summer so she's nice and tight and tucked in there as well as the heater being on or the water just being warm so she's getting that warmth off the bottom of the pond as well right onto her back and she loves jamming herself in there <laughs> let's go get this um cave we're gonna chuck in Always watching, aren't you, girly? I think that's where I want it, but I want it angled up a bit like that, because there's a gap at the front where she'll be able to go into. So I might get me shovel, and I'll just sort of, I'll dig around the perimeter we can sink it right into the ground. That way we can get it on the angle we want. We can get it perfect. It'll give her a couple openings and something to burrow into. I've got a heap of sandstone blocks and sandstone slabs. I might just chuck one in the middle at the front just to prop it up that little bit more. But look at the sun on that. The sun's coming straight down on that. That's, I mean, that was a pond before, it's winter. This is gonna give us so much more basking space. Got a hot pond, more basking room. And I'm going to put another, I've got an assortion of hollow logs actually, but I'll probably chuck the one back in that was in here. She loves it. It's perfect. Nice and round. I'll lay that here on an angle. I cut this pole originally to get the afternoon sun, which is coming from that way, straight onto her back. And like I said, always watching. Just waiting to come down and explore. <laughs> Last piece of the puzzle for now, I'm going to put our big hollow log back in and I'm going to angle it upwards. That way she can lay on it across, she'll get the sun coming here in the afternoon and when she... She'll get the sun coming from here all throughout the day and in the afternoon she'll get it through the door and through the window straight onto her back and she can be angled up like that. That'll be our last piece of the puzzle for today and then we can get started on the fence I think. Just need to grab a couple more sandstone pieces, keep it into place, stop it moving and rolling onto her. Especially when she's digging underneath and burrows everywhere. Don't want her causing any harm to herself. 
I don't think it can fall towards you guys, but I'm gonna get, go find one just to jam down there, just in case. Rather be safe than sorry. I'm gonna jam this fella in. Wedge it in there. Between the two pieces. I reckon. You can see now, that's not going anywhere. We got our big sandstone at the back to get that angle. We got it jammed on both sides. Give the little basking rock one more sweep. I'm pretty happy with that. So it looks pretty good if you ask me. We got a little flat rock, basking rock at the front here. We got our basking ledge you can hide in there. We got our nice big universal rock basking platform. So that's a bit I was talking about. Oh, there's another woody. So this is the bit I was talking about where I think you can put a pump in there and you can blow stuff up and have sort of a water feature. But obviously we're not using it for that. It's a universal rock basking platform. You can see now that that's where I put the sandstone just to jack it up. So all in here, she can all get in there, burrow. Actually opens up a bit, don't know if you can see. All around there. Got our plants, still got our heated pond and obviously our sticks to climb up to our basking platform there and our heated box up here. So if you ask me, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, I do want to get a start on the fence. I might come back in another couple days. I might not just to put, um, I've always been thinking about putting, putting another log like this sort of across there, something for it to bask up in the air here. Whether she'd do it, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to block. To be honest, I might block a bit of sun coming down to the floor. She's got those to climb, but I don't know. Sometimes the more the merrier. Sometimes the simplest is best. That's it for now. We can get a we'll have a look from the other side. I'd obviously love to plant it out a bit more as well. When I first put these plants in, they look fantastic with the two plants because it took up all that space back there. I might have to get another one. This side, we've got a heated pond warming up pretty quickly. All the space up the back there. From here, you can see the angle of that hollow log. Climb, climb, climb. All right, we'll give her some peace now. We'll make a start on the fence. I think I've got to get some shorts on too damn hot. And I'm sure I'll get some clips when she comes down. She'll be super interested and intrigued at what's going on and what's happened. She'll think she's in another place. So we'll get some clips when she comes down and explores. I literally walked to the mandarin tree here, got myself a mandarin, gave a couple to the goats, walked back. She's already come down and exploring. She's gone under a little tunnel here. There she is. Hopefully you can see all right through the mesh. Such active lizards. Ideally, you probably need to change their damn setup on the weekly to keep these things entertained. So this particular species, the Merton's Water Monitor, they're actually from up around the top top half of Australia, really, they're in all the waterways. I'm in Sydney, New South Wales, it's a fair bit colder. That's why we do have to supply these extra, extra things to keep our animals happy and healthy. I'll give you guys a quick rundown on the, on the aviary before I crack on with the fence. So it was actually a second hand one I got. I think there was pigeons or something in there. I've only got a six foot by four foot box trailer, so there ain't no way this was fitting in it. So I actually had to chop it up. We eventually put it all back together, but we made it work. So you can see the original chop, gouled him up, put a L bracket there, nice and strong. You can see these were some sort of feeding compartments. I've put brackets there so they ain't opening. You can see there I've also chopped, chopped. And there's also on the on the back side there's there's um there's also brackets to stop it from opening. Uh, what else did we have to do? What else did we have to do? You can see I've also put the the angle brackets underneath to hold up our platforms. Those are just screwed through into an extra piece of metal, keep it nice and sturdy. 
come around the back, same thing, same thing. Some more joins, put the extra joins on the back, make it not look so obvious. Also one on the bottom, just all riveted in. Then, this is my first crack at paving. It didn't have to be pretty because, I'm looking forward to not doing that anymore. It didn't have to be pretty because it's pretty much not gonna be seen. But when we bought this place, there was, they're not really pavers, but bricks left absolutely everywhere. I'm sure you'll see it when I'm digging up this fence. It's just bricks in the ground everywhere. So what I did, I paved up the size of the aviary, and then all I did, I made up a grout sort of cement mix and went around, just made it look look a little bit nicer. I held it in there, otherwise it would have just fallen apart, I guess. And then wherever there was some big gaps from my terrible paving, I just put a little bit of grout. There she is there, getting the shits at me for blocking her sun. So I put a little bit of grout. This is my first attempt, it's nothing pretty. I think with the sand monitor, I might actually put put the aviary on sleepers so that way I can get a nice, really deep substrate and the lizard can dig down, down, down as far as she wants. I'll just have to put some mesh around the perimeter nice and deep into the ground. I was also worried that she'd be able to escape out the door because she was a bit smaller when she was put in. So what I did, I riveted this extra bar in just to close the gap on both sides. You can see there. And I made this extra window. She wasn't getting enough, well, I didn't think she was getting enough sun in the afternoon. I really wanted her to get the sun all throughout the day. So I put this extra window in, cut that out, put the mesh weld all around, that stuff's amazing. Just riveted some mesh on. Now I better stop rambling and make a start on this fence, eh? The next step, I'm gonna have to get these extension leads off the top of this fence. The first one's gonna be this one. I should only need to pop a couple and I can lift that corner off, get that cable out, get the rest of these off. I'm gonna have to, hopefully they're long enough that I can attach them up to here. Just for the time beam, hopefully I can attach it up to here, back across to this pole, up over the aviary, onto the roof. Just so it doesn't pull on those lights, I don't want any of that stuffing up or coming undone. So hopefully they're long enough to temporarily do that. Hey buddy. Oh. Careful Tricky. Gotcha. Put it back together. Because the bird wants to do the great escape, don't you, Tricks? Just come up to say hello. Hey, Tricky. Oh. There's our one that was in the bird aviary, nearly donked me in the head. All right, the one out of the bird cage is gone. I've got all the length I can on the pond heater and the heat light lamp. So hopefully I can pull it to this corner and get it off the fence. Cause I don't want it moving from up there and damaging anything up there. I should say. So I'll cut this, so I've got car tires on now. I'll cut this and I'll try to get it up around here and that'll be out of our way. So I got that right back to here, cable tied up, up away from the part of the fence we're pulling off. Next thing to do, run along here with the grinder, take all these notches off. Same on the bottom, same on there. And then we can drop that piece of the fencing straight down. Then we'll just be left with our bars, which we'll have to dig up, pull them out of the ground. Happy days. All the fiddly shit's done. Now we'll go through Ma and whip a snip this. You can see there's bricks and pavers everywhere, so we're gonna have to dig those up, level it as best we can, and then start digging. I just gave these two dorks a bath because they were rolling around in crap and mud and now look at them. 
All right, so I've pulled up all the pavement and bricks. So I'm just going to run the mower along and shouldn't need the whipper snipper. I maybe need to, need to whipper snipper around the poles. So I'll run the mower along and we'll see how it looks. It's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. I can see what I'm doing. I can see where I'm digging. There's not going to be so much grass in the way. It's not perfect for now. It doesn't matter. This is where our trench is going to be going. So we'll have a conduit coming down here. I'll have to dig down. Watch out for this water pipe, so I'll have to expose that, make sure we don't hit him. Dig our trench along here, and then into the back of our Avery. Obviously, I have to dig this back up for my trench, for my trench for the electrical. But I'll just fill it in for now, just in case I get lazy and don't do it for a while. Plus, I don't want the dogs cutting themselves on that bit of metal I've cut off. Hey guys, it's a new day. Been running like a, been running around like a pork chop all morning, getting everything I need, all the conduit and whatnot, ready to dig our trench. Conduit's there. It's a bit chilly today, actually, and getting pretty late on in the afternoon I had some other shit to do I don't know let's dig a trench and start getting into it eh? it's chilly as I want to get in the hot box with her oh no scratch me GoPro Whew. trench is done So I just laid the first little bit of conduit in, just make sure I had the right corner up here. So obviously, start from the start, eh? So obviously my power feed's gonna be coming out of there, so I'll have to drill a hole, bring the conduit down into the ground here. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Around here, up here. I think I'm gonna have conduit come up here, drill straight through put a power point on the inside because that's right where our heat lights are and I can plug them straight in instead of this and then I'll have a little junction box here with the conduit coming across straight into there because that's where our water heater is so if we have a power point on the other side and plug that water heater straight in get rid of all these cables but now it's time to make sure our conduit actually fits in the hole chop it back might be okay So I'm going to start running my cable through and then I'll go back through after I got my cable all the way through and glue the conduits together. So if you do want to do anything like this yourself, just keep in mind I'm a licensed electrician so I can do all the cabling and wiring up and stuff legally. But you can always dig your own trenches, lay your own conduits, get everything ready to go, make it easier, save some money, whatever works. I just pulled the end piece off and it's actually come all the way to the end. I didn't think I'd get it that far. Happy days. That's what I'll do now. I'll pull the rest through. Enough length to go up and join into our cables that are up there. See if we can see them. Oh, there's a power circuit up there, which we're going to hook into. So I'll pull enough length for that and then happy days. Get our cable out. Enough length to connect up there. Enough cable to come up here. Time to start gluing. Make sure our pipes don't come apart, little man. This shit gets everywhere. I haven't had to use it for ages, to be honest. Smells good, but. It's a new day, and if I don't finish today, I'm just taking the piss, to be honest. I should have finished yesterday. Ridiculous. I've just checked, one of our diamonds has come out. This is one of our diamonds in care. It's come out for a winter bask, soaking up that sun, which there actually isn't much of at the moment. But enough lip flapping. I better bloody get in and get stuck into it, eh? Look at that. 
Beautiful. Straight up and in. So I just got to finish up this end now. Obviously not going to hook it up till everything's done. So I want to come up, hook into a, um, a junction box, which I thought I had some, but they're the wrong size. So I'm going to duck down back to duck back down to the hardware now. May grab some lunch while I'm out and we can get stuck into this bit this afternoon. Been running around like an absolute headless chook for the last couple of hours just to get these three pieces. I went to two hardware stores nearby, neither of them had it. I ended up going out to Bunnings, but I got some of Porto into me belly on the way anyway, so it worked out. So we're gonna get started on the back here. What do you reckon, girly? He's probably gonna get grumpy. No, no food. I do have food for you, actually. Hopefully that'll be able to stop any of the swarf or metal bits going in the pond. Just over there watching. So I can't find my hole saw kit. So I got this manky old piece, which I can't even get a drill bit into. So I'm going to drill a hole, just sit it in there and I don't know, hopefully it works. <laughs> That's the first time he's gone in the water. I think it's built for it. <laughs> Seems like it. Absolutely butchered it on the other side. So what I've done for here, because I think start of summer, which is probably already is, I'll just never got around to releasing this video, I'm guessing. Um, I'll actually be putting this box here, so power will be coming from that way. And down here, I'll just plug that for now, but I'll leave that free because I'm sure this summer I'll be putting an Avery or a pit here for slash the Sam monitor that's inside. And all I'm gonna have to do is run the power straight out into the ground across and up into our new enclosure. So that's just ready for future. So you can see here, I'm riveting these saddles on. Rivet, rivet, and I'll continue along. This is just so I've got no screws actually going into the enclosure and there's nothing she can cut herself on that way. So go and put this next, the power point for the heat lights in now, so I know exactly where to connect our conduit up to the T-piece. So I'm thinking, what are you doing? It's not a crashy enclosure, is it? <laughs> it's okay, crashy. So I think I'll just chuck right up in this top corner here, right there. Gives me more room if I want to do anything else. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> Careful puppies. You wanna help? So we got our power feed which is coming from the canals up and in, up into that GPO, out of that GPO, back down. And we're gonna run this cable over to the other power point. Having all the conduit on the back rather than coming back of the ground and then over into the other one, it means if I ever move the Avery, if I move house, I just gotta cut the power there, 
and everything's already wired up. I've just got to join the power back in later on, so that's the easiest and best way to do it. But we've got everything saddled up, all connected up, chook, 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 all nicely. Strong as, not going anywhere. So all we'll do now, we'll fill the trench back in, and then I've just got the two power points to hook up on the inside and then just re change all that cabling. I might fix up a dodgy dodgy box as well. I've got some better timber we can do that with. <laughs> Crack on. Got it, all the trench backfilled. There's a few spots where I'm a bit low on dirt because the ground was really bumpy before, so the, there's some other spots I want to fill in as well as around the yard. So I'm going to have to duck down to landscape supplies, fill up my ute with dirt, and we can really level this out. Make it look like we'll never even hear. Just gotten back from a brush tail possum rescue that was injured, had sort of the injury on her side and a bit of scab into her face. Could have been start of stress derm or to be honest, it looked a bit, bit more like an attack from something. But in the process, she's attacked me. Look at that. Good one. Lovely brush tail possums, they're always so lovely. <laughs> But she's in fantastic hands now. We dropped her off to um, a lady who who does most of our possums. She's re really good with them, really experienced. So she'll look after her for a couple of weeks and hopefully she'll be able to get back out in the wild. Let's start on these PowerPoint too. Eh? This is obviously our one for our heat lights. I think tomorrow I'm gonna go borrow my old man's jigsaw because I don't have one. I'm gonna cut this box up better. I'll take it right up to the roof and I'll leave a little notch here where the cables can come through and straight into the power point. Now we're gonna get down above this pond again, try to get to that fella. That'll be fun, won't it, girly? There we go. Thank God. Without getting wet. Oh. <coughs> Before I plug this in and those in, I've obviously got to wire up the power in. So we'll run into the kennels, we'll jump up there, we'll get that done. There he is there. So we're going to hook into this circuit here. We'll just chuck a junction box up there for the time being. I want to redo all in here, so I'm not super worried about how tight it is. I just want to get it in for now. And we can piss off all this stuff. And I'm just going to dodgy up this cable hanging across the room because I want to replace it. The, all of it, so I'm not going to bother re redoing it right now. So I'll just run it across here, give us some extra length. There we are, all hooked up. I'll fix up some of the loose cabling later, but that's our feed. We can fire him up. I'll grab a tester. We'll go test the power points outside. Once that's done, we can start getting rid of our extension leads finally. Sweet. So I've spent the morning, I went and got a heap of topsoil and I've spread that out all over the top of the trench where there was just some divots and just made it nice and flat, let the dirt grow let the grass grow through eventually. Uh, it was really bumpy there to start with, so it's a lot better now. I pulled out the mandarin tree. I just didn't film any of this stuff. I didn't want the episode to turn into a video about Burke's backyard. Probably seen enough of me messing about in the garden. Uh, it's time to finally get rid of these extension leads. 
I tested our PowerPoints last night. They're ready to go. Happy days. Just notice one of our diamonds is out basking again. Smack bang in the middle of winter. Soaking up that winter sun. Obviously I'll put a timer in. So I don't have to come and turn them on, or on and off. One, two. Beautiful. How good is that? So I'll cut my box. I'll put a little notch here so these cables can go through nicely. Then I'll just do a nice coil up in there. Keep it all tidy. So there's our power point for our water heater. That won't be on a timer. That runs 24-7. They have a built-in thermostat. So heats up, gets the temperature, shuts off. When it cools down too much, turns back on, heats up, shuts off. So he can just plug straight into the power point. I'm just gonna probably have to wrap the cable around a few times just just to get rid of some of that length. It doesn't look the greatest from down here, but it's hidden. You can't see it from up there. Plugged in. That's on 24/7. It's probably not on at the moment. It's probably, oh no, I lie. Might be able to. See. Yeah, you can see the light. So yeah, he's on at the moment, and she's coming to see what the hell's going on. I put that timber in just for me to use as a stand for the GoPro and she thinks it's a basking platform. Sorry girly, I've got to take it out. Hey, I'm going to have to take it out. You going to get off? I'm just going to think I'm rude now. I've got some... some I've got some timber here that was lying around, so this is just to fix up the uh, heat box, make it look a bit better. It was on the piss and that wasn't very good wood. It's just a piece of ply I had laying around, so I just marked out, this is going to be our front piece. I'm going to have to run back down the hardware and grab a piece for the side, unless I can find something laying around somewhere. But let's chop this fella up. Oh, there's her front piece. It'll at least give us some privacy until I... I'll go to the hardware today and just get this end piece. And we can slip this end piece in here and screw that up to the end piece so it stays nice and flat. I might get some little L brackets to put in the end piece down there too, just so it's a little bit more sturdy. Always so intrigued with what I'm doing. Just covered in my... Covered in the... Um wood chippings from when I was screwing the piece of timber in. So cut my piece up, got a little gap for the heat light cables, got some little brackets just to straighten it up a bit more. Just whack him in. I just put all this together, I didn't bother filming it, didn't think anyone would want to see me fiddling around again. Screwed in our new box, actually measured to the right size, got a little notch for our cables to come through, the saddle, and I've just wrapped it around for now. I do still have to chuck the timer on for the heat lights to turn on and off so they're not on during the night, but I'll do that later on. Put a couple couple brackets here just to make that a bit stronger. And she's already testing it out. Now I've got a bit of a treat for her for putting up with me for the last couple of days. This is just a marinara mix I get from the local supermarket. It's got some squid, fish, mussels, all different stuff that she'd find out in the wild. Every feed I give is always different. I'll give her quail, rats, mice, eggs, um, switch up with the marinara mix, and of course, yabbies, crayfish, whatever you want to call them. They're an absolute favorite. And like I was saying earlier, they're awesome to watch her eat. Oh, she's already got her eye on me. I'll entice her down. I don't want her to come and eat off the thing. Give her a piece of fish first. Start with a piece of fish. Come on, girly. Come on.
One of my favorite things to do is I'll give her a pre big prey item. I think now I get their quails, they're a couple weeks old, they're fairly big, and she'll spend an hour or more just tearing it apart, just ripping it up, get a wing off, another wing, a leg, a head, and that's really good enrichment, just to see the way she tears it, uses the teeth and claws to just rip it apart. She'll scratch it on things to try and rip it apart. Come on, I got more. beautiful spacious enclosure for her to spend her winter in it's a lot nicer for me to look at without all the cords running everywhere and also something a little different for the channel in case you guys are getting sick of rescues so I think that's it for now I've got some cleaning up to do I'll leave her for the rest of the day catch some afternoon Sun go up in there warm up in the water whatever she wants to do I'll see you guys on the next one